So Donkey Kong is a weird franchise. Way back at the dawn of time, you know, the 80s, the franchise started with a bunch of arcade games. You get the one you can play in Brawl for like five seconds, the one with the character who doesn't exist, and actually, no, forget about that one, that one didn't exist. And after that, Donkey Kong just kind of vanished while that unnamed plumber guy took the spotlight. Imagine you apply for a job, you're the big cheese, everybody knows you, and then they give the job to some random guy outside who walks by. That's DK's life. But hey, who cares about that when you can learn math with DK Jr., yeah! All looked lost for our suffering simian friend, and then boom, Donkey Kong Country. With its detailed worlds, tranquilizing atmosphere, and those mind-blowing graphics that almost look 3D if you squint your eyes a little, it changed everything. Suddenly, DK was on top of the world once again. His influence was expanding. Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3, Donkey Kong Land, console bundles, toys, a cartoon that looks... Whew, just beautiful. Everything. The reign of DK had begun, and at the helm was a little company by the name of Rareware. Truly, nothing could go wrong here, right? And then Microsoft bought Rareware in 2002, leaving the soul of Donkey Kong up for grabs. But here's the thing, nobody had any clue what to do with Donkey Kong. He just kinda got tossed into whatever weird spin-off game they could toss him into. Suddenly, the reign of Donkey Kong became the reign of Donkey Kong, you know, because it, it was sad. But hey, it wasn't all doom and gloom. After all, among the litany of experiments came a game that, even despite being absolutely nothing like anything seen before, was one of the most interesting titles Nintendo's ever made. Enter Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Released for the GameCube in 2004, this was a weird little experiment. And like, I know when you look at this, you just think, oh, well, that just looks like a normal platformer, I don't know what the deal is, but hey, maybe move your hand out of the way they're in. Yeah, not so normal now, huh? And since my friend Adam decided to let's play the game and made it look really fun, I'm now the proud, or shameful, owner of a pair of these. This is really the peak of life, isn't it? This is as good as it's gonna get, huh? I sure hope not. Imagine an entire game where you control DK with a pair of bongos. You, you don't gotta imagine it because it's right here. Yes, the DK Bongos. These were certainly an interesting choice for a controller. These were originally released alongside Donkey Konga, a rhythm game where, shocking, you play with bongos. But what's actually shocking is that instead of playing actual Donkey Kong music, you just kinda play terrible covers of real songs. You know, something about this just seems fake, but it isn't. Yeah, unless you were looking to play that. You bought these bongos for one reason and one reason only, for Jungle Beat. Now, drop it in for the first time, the thoughts running through your head are probably something like, there's no freaking way this actually works. And then you run through the first stage just slamming on those bongos and think, oh man, this actually works. So yeah, the bongos only have a couple different inputs. You slam on the right one to move right, slam on the left one to move left, hit both at the same time to jump, and most bizarrely, you clap to do whatever the heck this is. Is that... Is that the Dong expansion I've heard so much about? But yeah, the thing has a mic on it, and it works surprisingly well for 20-year-old hardware. And yeah, that's not exactly a ton of moves to work with, and I mean, it's a pair of bongos. I don't know what you expect. But what's noteworthy here is how the game uses these limitations to make a game far more fun than it has any right to be. Every stage is designed deceptively simple. Platforming seems pretty basic, screw-ups aren't really punished, and enemies are very infrequent. If you were just running from one end to the other, you'd be forgiven for thinking this game might be a little too basic. That is until you notice this guy right here, the combo meter. The more bananas you grab before touching the ground, the more the combo meter builds and the more bananas or beats you get. For some reason, they're called beats in this game. I don't know why. Don't question it. You can also get more points added to your combo by doing cool moves along the way, doing backflips, ground pounds, wall jumps, all these just add a little bit more to your combo meter. And it's this guy that completely changes how you approach levels. Suddenly, the focus shifts from just trying to get to the end to trying to rack up as many points as possible along the way. A lot of levels are made so that if you time everything perfectly, you can go the the entire stage without touching the ground. So it becomes this exhilarating roller coaster of timing your slaps and claps to try and stay in the air as long as possible without screwing up. And then it gets crazier once you realize that this game abides by a couple of rules that complicate this even further. For example, just grabbing beats regularly gives you way less points than grabbing them with a clap. DK will do this ridiculous looking grab fest whenever you're near beats and you clap, and while it's already satisfying enough to look at, it's also absolutely vital to getting those extra points. And then you might notice, hey wow, if I grab more of them with one clap, they gets me more beats than just grabbing them with multiple claps. And wow, they usually seem to come out of objects in these circular patterns. What a coincidence. It's then that you've discovered the true game Jungle Beat is trying to be. You get these crests at the end of each kingdom, and depending on the number of beats you get, you can get not just one, two, or three, but four different crests, with the last of those requiring absolute mastery of each stage. The game becomes almost rhythmic, and not just because you're playing with bongos. You just try stages over and over, getting the timing down just a bit better each time, matching the rhythm of the stage like 
play out with your perfectly timed bongo beats and claps. And the game even pushes you to play this way. Those crests aren't just for show here, they're what allows you to unlock the extra levels this game has to offer. If you don't get good and you don't become the combo king, then you're gonna miss out on a lot of this game's content. And what absolutely makes this is those bongos you're playing this with, and I know how ridiculous that sounds, but trust me. They're great. So, fun fact, did you know you can play this game with a GameCube controller? Well, you can, and if you decide to do that, then you'll find out real quick that without these bongos, the game feels a lot less satisfying to play. And yeah, part of that has to do with the level design not being all that complex. What is a fairly tough challenge to do with a pair of bongos is significantly less so when you have an actual controller. But that's not all there is to this. The long and short of it is that the tactile feel of slamming those bongos adds a lot to this game's feel. There's no way around it. Playing with these things just feels good. Part of this is due to the presentation. Watching DK do all this over the top stuff as you slam those bongos, watching DK grab a bunch of bananas after you do a perfectly timed clap with buttons is just kinda eh, but with bongos, that spectacle now houses real world feedback. Plus, you know, it's just kinda fun slamming on bongos, like what do you want from me? And to say this game really makes you feel like DK isn't completely correct, it feels more like you're commanding him. Each bongo hit has a clear effect on the game. You send DK out with a clap of your hands, and with all the force you can muster, you pound as fast as you can and watch DK absolutely wreck stuff in front of him. And can we just take a second to admire how crazy DK is in this game? There's something so bizarre about watching DK walk up to this poor frog dude just minding his own business and then tearing his freaking tongue out. And yes, these animations are certainly fun to pull off, but it's like DK Man, do these guys really deserve all this? These guys probably got lives, friends, families, and DK's just like, am monkey! <laughs> Fun fact, this stuff is the reason why this game has an E10 plus rating and not an E. I'm not joking. I also want to say that these boss fights are surprisingly fun. You fight each boss multiple times, and while the initial fights are ridiculously basic, like, oh no, how am I gonna tell if he's gonna attack? How will I ever dodge? Oh, but each fight adds more and more layers to the fight, with the final versions of these bosses being some pretty insane stuff. Especially the bird guy, he's probably my favorite in the entire game. Wow, that's a lot of positive stuff, huh? I mean, all that sounds so cool, so why does no one talk about this, you might be wondering. I mean, while a lot of the other mainline Donkey Kong platformers get talked about a whole lot, Jungle Beat just kinda exists? Why is that? Well, here's the thing, if you ever break that frenetic pace the game really pushes you to keep going with, if you ever stop to smell the roses, so to speak, you're gonna realize real quick that there's only one rose. Outside of that fun gameplay loop, there's pretty much nothing else notable about this game. Take, for example, the environments. In other Donkey Kong games, the environment and atmosphere of the world is an integral part of giving this series its feel. Whether it be the semi-realistic environments of the original, the slightly more goofy world design of 2 and 3, or the over-the-top spectacle of the Returns games, each of these games crafts an environment that's not only memorable, but also one that has a notable atmosphere. And then Jungle Beat walks in all drunk and is like, screw that, look here's a nice area, no interest interesting backgrounds, no notable set pieces, no memorable music, just an open wasteland and empty caves. It's boring. Every environment in this game is made like this. Some games put gameplay first in terms of their environments, which is fine because they usually try to later go and mold the world around that to feel more interesting. In Jungle Beat, nothing stands out. Gameplay wasn't just the first priority, it was the only priority. And boy, does that mean they're very unmemorable. Since they're so linear and since there's no exploration, like, at all, it means the levels just don't stand out from each other because you don't get to spend much time in them and because you don't get to see anything interesting in them either. They just sort of bleed together, you know what I'm saying? And you might be saying, hey Duo, how does the music sound? Is it good? Is it bad? Well, I don't know because I can't hear all these freaking bongos. Like seriously, these things take up an entire room. I can't even play this game at night. That's how bad it is. Nah, but listening to the music outside of the game, it's fine, I guess? Like, there's a couple pretty good tracks here and there, and also there's this one that I swear sounds like it belongs in Fire Emblem more than Donkey Kong. Like, seriously, what is this? Outside of those couple tracks, though, there isn't really much to write home about. Oh, and the story? <laughs> what story? I'm not making a joke like, haha, the story is so tiny. I mean, the game literally doesn't have a story. You start up the game and bam, go beat up these random guys. You don't know why you're doing any of this. It's like, are these guys even the bad guys? Did DK get into some weird mushrooms and go ransack some random civilization? I don't know. Probably. But without anything tying these levels together, everything just feels sorta aimless. And that really stinks. It really sucks that this game has all these problems, because I do think it would be remembered a lot more fondly if it didn't. I mean, the game is still fun. Like, really fun, in fact. When everything works together, this game is a bombastic, electrifying experience, but all that doesn't change the fact that the game isn't remembered because there's nothing to remember outside of the way you play it. Like, it was important in some ways, several of its more bombastic elements would go on to directly inspire how Returns 
turned out, but that's not what it'll be remembered for. It'll be remembered as that one DK game you played with the bongos, and that's kind of sad. But hey, you know what? For what it was worth, it was fun getting to try this game out for the first time. I definitely can't say I've played anything quite like it, and that's worth something at least. Okay, well, you know, I think we've had enough of Jungle Beat for right now, but I don't think we've had enough of Donkey Kong yet. And you might be wondering, hey, what are we doing next? What's the next Donkey Kong game? Well, how about we return to Donkey Kong Country Returns? This is a really dumb ending to a video. And hey, if you enjoyed the video, why not subscribe or maybe like the video? And hey, go check out my previous video on Mario Kart DS, that'd be pretty cool. Or check out my Donkey Kong Country Returns video when that comes out, whenever that is. Anyways, have a good day.